trying to get one more in the show, and I just, uh, uh, a student had this on, I'm just really intrigued by the hair and, the, and, the, and that little hair clip and, and of this little, kind of a pre-Raphaelite narrative going on, and so I just thought that would be a just nice shape, a nice circle, almost a little rectangle or a triangle, and just these two shapes. Almost, almost visually equally balanced, I thought. You know, if you took this into here, I thought there was a weight scale that these two shapes would just be so nice uh, together. So simple, but very hard. This was one of them. About three times, that's going, I don't want to do this. <laughs> this hair is hard. I mean, this, because it's overlap, 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 overlap. That's probably a 60 hours into that, in, into just 60, 70 hours of just that hair. You know, overlapping, overlapping, and uh, but I have that have a lot of, of uh, uh, texture that looks really confusing. It really is confusing to me too for the first couple of days. But then again, after that, it's you know I, I get a, I, I find it, and then it's much much easier. But I, I work eight nine hours a day on these. And when I was talking to somebody today, and when I draw, I pretty much when I draw an eight hour day, I draw a good seven hours and 40 minutes. I draw all day. I sit for you know, two, three hours at a shot, get up, walk down the hall, use the facilities in my studio, you know, 10 minute lunch. So I really get a good long day. And so a day of drawing hair, when I go to bed at night and shut my eyes, that's, all, that's like looking at the sun, that's all I see are, you know, those textures, so. And then this is, a, this is one I did when my, you know, some things like my dad passed away, so I think kind of the huddle, holding yourself. I kind of like this, almost like this little island right here of the textures, and I thought it was nice with these, you know, textures of the skin, the floor, kind of this, you know, urban interior, this nice line swing. So I really like this drawing. I think there's a lot of nice stuff. A real, real nice little area that inside, you know, that those shadows cutting through. So really not a real big drawing, but I think it, it feels big to me. So I think that's kind of a nice piece, you know, those, all those textures next to each other. But do you guys have any questions on any of the drawings? Or yeah, yeah. In some of your description, you used the word detail. Can you just point out? It's on the card. I think it's one of the paintings you have. Detail and the description of the art piece. Can you just point out? Uh, what exactly do you mean when you say detail on the description for the art piece? Well, actually, I think I'll, I'll answer yeah. that one. That, you know, on the card, we had a detail, an excerpt from the bigger drawing. Right, from that one, yeah. the long one. So on the back of the card, we okay. just okay. 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 So okay. it was more right. of a logistic right. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah. But, detail but I think your sense of detail is quite right. different than ours. Right. Detail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> detail is, is just amping it up that next bit to get everything just right. You know, when I, when I know I'm done with a drawing, uh, it's diminishing returns. I mean, sometimes people come and look at a drawing, and to me it's a quarter, it's, a, it's not, it's three quarters done. They go, well, you're obviously finished with this. I'm going, I mean, to me it looks like slop, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, and what you can do, and you know, like my Denise, I said, when I say I'm almost done, she goes, well, that means a few more days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can easily take a day that I think I've got another hour and work another day and a half on it. What I do at the end of a drawing, because when I draw, I keep a piece of glassine over the drawing. So no, even if I'm drawing loose, in the beginning, if I'm not over it, I have my hand on the paper. But once I have graphite down, glassine's like glassless wax paper. What I do at the end of the drawing is I'll just come and I'll slice the picture off and I'll just, just check it over, slice it off. Just look for any edges, you know, make sure everything's has a nice flow, every edge is nice, all the, all the detail. I use a lot of eraser when I work, you know, some of these, you know, I, I use the eraser as a tool not to take away, you know, so coming in getting these little hairs. So when you use the eraser, you take away, but you, it's never perfect, so whatever you take away, you've got to come back and draw back around. It's not that, it's not as simple as it sounds, it's not like I had this, you know, razor sharp eraser, it gives these perfect white lines. It takes a lot of stuff off <coughs> around it, then i got to come back and you know, refine around that again. So, but when I draw, you know, these things seem really big in my head, and then you know, sometimes I come back to them, they seem like, wow, that's really small, and I gotta get that scale back big in my head again. So, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
You talked a lot about the use of shadows. Do you use actual real shadows or a lot of I really I use real shadows, but I really enhance them. I mean, I have one light with one light bulb, <laughs> and and I I really I mean a lot of times when I drop, you know, things will be either black and I can't see them at all, and so I make up a lot of stuff. But I really punch these up, you know, because I don't have this. I mean. He was on, you know, there are white walls behind him here, and this is white walls on my model stand. I added all this stuff in afterwards. So I, he was up on my model stand in a white, you know, room like this. So all these are in my studio. I just make up what environments I need. But I really enhance the values because, again, as the artist, I get to, you know, manipulate what I want, how much I want to bring up this core of the shadow, how much reflected light, you know, light I want in this. You know, then when, you know, then whatever is dark is behind this just dictates what the edge is. You know, so when it's here, the edge is made with a value coming behind the figure. But once I felt that this edge should be darker than that, then once it hits its peak, then that dark this edge is made with a dark coming into it. So it flips flips off. So this one I decided to make this outside a little darker. So this whole edge is pulling off the edge. There's no edge that's on the outside that's darker. Where this one, you know, I flip that back into it and feel that was quite dark. So, but I really manipulate these shadows, and I make a lot of, a lot of the shadows. Because, I mean, that he's, you know, there's nothing behind here, so, you know, I, I just, I just felt the dark shadow would be real nice on this one, you know, dark background. How much are you using like stuff and like rubbing, like? Uh, I cross hatch. Yeah, it's all line, awesome. so I don't use the stump, right. and uh, it's just cross hatching. And if I sometimes if I'm using a, 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 a B pencil, I'll take my finger and I'll, I'll knock a little value off. But mainly it, it, it's all just the background's all cross hatching, you know, starting hard and then working soft and then working back and forth. A lot of times if I use a real soft, I'll come back in. But I know I've never used a stump. I'm not a personally a fan of, for, of that, but you know, I just it's just slowly building everything up. Yeah, a stump is just a piece of tightly woven. It's like a pencil mm -hmm. shape uh, made out of uh, cardboard. Would that be right? Yeah. Okay. And some people do great jobs with it. Just for what I do, I don't, you know, I don't use them. Yeah. Curious about the meaning about your father and the huddle. The yeah. There. What that meant. To you. Well, just kind of holding yourself and kind of introspection. You know, I think that was kind of the. You know, something drawn. You know, yeah, you know. yeah, kind of, you know, like you're by yourself a little bit, you know. So, it's not me, but it's it's kind of me. Kind of a little bit of a psychological self-portrait. I don't do a lot of self-portraits. I usually do a self-portrait if I'm in a self-portrait show. You know, so then I'll, but usually I don't do self-portraits. Do you make shoes with a magnifying glass? I don't. <coughs> then do your pencils must be like so tiny. Very sharp. I'm a very good pencil sharp. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second thing I'm good at. Um, when we campfires, I'm always the one that does the sticks for marshmallows. <laughs> really, really sharp. Uh, how many pencils does one drawing have when we go through the seat? I don't know. I have a bag of pencils. I forgot what that's called. I only use the pencils till they're about I, that long, about four and a half inches, because the weight doesn't feel right. So I'm drawing. Also, I just take them, toss them in, and grab another one. And so I have a big bag of pencils. So when the apocalypse comes, I'll have enough to keep going on the little one. <laughs> It depends on how hard to hold it, you know, how, how they can hold it and how they, if they can't hold it. Are they present for the whole time of the no, drawing? No, no, no. I wouldn't make any money. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, drawings and then they lease stuff and some for a reference, especially for hair, you know, that I, I really need to, that stuff that would move. But a lot of times it's just, you know, setting up, setting up, you know, uh, just set up stories. I think we're good. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.